Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss about the 21 year journey of Brahmo's supersonic cruise missile. Now this topic is of extreme significance from the perspective of prelims the facts. From the perspective of GS mains paper second and third it is going to be of very much importance because the analysis of the Brahmo's is important. Let's move on and talk about Brahmo's. Now Brahmo's for the first time ever was launched from Chandipur in India when I am talking about India from Chandipur in 2001 on 12th of June and since then several versions upgraded versions of the supersonic cruise missiles have been developed for having a strategic significance of it in India. It formulates such a deterrence for the rivals and arch nemesis of India that it becomes of utmost importance that we know about the Brahmos supersonic cruise missile. So, if we talk about Brahmos, it's a joint venture between Russia and India. Basically, a joint venture we can say between DRDO of India and NPOM of Russia. So, through this venture, the Brahmos supersonic cruise missile was availed by India. And it is a two stage solid propellant engine in the first stage and liquid ramjet in the second missile second stage missile okay so you have to learn certain things about this as a fact that it's a two stage missile it has solid propellant engine in the first stage and liquid ramjet in the second missile second stage of the missile so what is ramjet ramjet is basically using air as a source of combustion and this air it will be availed through the forward motion of the missile so when the missile moves forward it uses or draws in the air that is coming out and use it for combustion and this is a very unique feature of Brahmos cruise missile. It is a multi-platform missile. It can be launched from land, air, sea and even submarine and it is a missile with pinpoint accuracy. That means it's so accurate that is why it gives an edge to India over other, over other countries when it comes to supersonic missile. Works both night and day and despite of any weather condition it is amazing and it works on the fire and forget principle that means once you have set your target after that there is no need to maneuver it towards the target it is the fastest cruise missile in the world and it works more than three times more than the speed of sound okay mac 2.8 to three times more than the speed of the sound okay moving on if we talk about the background when it uh, there was a need of India getting independent with respect to its own missile program, the integrated guided missile development program was launched during the tenure of when APG Abdul Kalam basically was overseeing this entire program and Prithvi, Agni, Akash, Trishul and Nag were built under it and you see the sanction of the fund was rupees 389 crore. Now till 2007 only Prithvi and Agni were ready and the completion of Agni and Prithvi projects required an additional 1770 crore. So, so much of the value of the GDP has went into the integrated guided missile development program. Prithvi was the first missile to be inducted into the Indian Army. This is a prelims fact. DRDO basically took 26 years to develop three variants of the Agni missile. Now, although when it was launched, integrated, uh, integrated guided missile development program was launched, the deadline was 1995. But we were well above the deadline. That means we uh, actually breached the threshold of 1995 and took so long to develop our missiles. Akash was to have four missile batteries that costed rupees 9 billion in 1985, which has now escalated to rupees 20 billion. Also, Trishul has a range of 9 km and is designed to counter low level attacks with a very quick reaction time. So one thing that we have to understand over here, but they have certain drawback that we have to keep in mind the, the reason for Brahmos to come into the picture. Okay, moving on, if we talk about Brahmos, now an intergovernmental agreement was signed with Russia in Moscow in 1998. Okay, then we got Brahmos Aerospace. That's a joint venture between Russia and Dia, uh, Russia and India. The Indian side, it held 50.5% and Russians held 49.5%. So, 
that means india had a majority stake here so one thing or another thing to keep in mind is this can be a prelims question for you the first successful test was in 2001 from a specially designed land based launcher okay from the first base we launched it it was land based the first major export order was of 375 million that was received from philippines only in the current year philippines navy that means it can be launched from the sea based regions as well okay moving on if we talk about what is need for cruise missile first that at that time it was seen that pakistan and china they were aggressively pursuing their own missile programs and during the gulf war it was felt that india needs a strategic edge because the world has been volatile ever since it was it came out of the colonial period so what is cruise missile it's a type of low flying strategic guided missile and because of the precursor to the cruise missile the precursor to the cruise missile was german v1 missile this was launched or used during the world war second after this us and ussr it started pursuing their they both started pursuing their missile programs by keeping in mind that they wanted a supersonic cruise missile okay moving on if we talk about the world's fastest cruise missiles first is brahmos between india and russia secondly we have the t802 this belongs to china supersonic cruise missile then comes p800 onyx this of course was built during the period of ussr now it belongs to russia and again p270 mosquit belongs to ussr russia so you can see all the major supersonic cruise missiles they have been developed by russia moving on now what is the present situation first of all we need to know that the current brahmos cruise missile it is unparalleled because it has extreme accuracy and versatility that means it is totally accurate it is going to give you a hundred percent whenever it is asked to launch get launched and destroy a target and it is versatile not only it will work from the land bases but sea air and submarine bases and land-based brahmos formations along the borders uh, brahmos equipped sukhoi 30s they are based on the their uh, sukhoi 30s are based in the northern theater and southern peninsula theater so if we talk about the borders there these strategically significant brahmos cruise missiles have been situated so that in any case of threat it can deter the enemy the brahmos capable ships and submarines they are deployed in c together they form a triad that means they are a triangle they are build, building a triangle moving on if we talk about land base you can see four to six mobile autonomous launchers each with three missiles on board that can be fired almost simultaneously that means they are going to wreak havoc if they do so the upgraded land attack version with capability of cruising at 2.8 mac can hit targets at a range up to 400 km with precision for ship based for the first time ever it was launched in 2005 it was successful in hitting sea based targets beyond the radar horizon the brahmos can be launched as a single unit or in a salvo of up to eight missiles separated by 2.5 second interval these can target a group of frigates with modern missile defense system air launched first time it was on november 22 2017 brahmos was successfully flight tested for the first time from a sukhoi 30 mki against a sea based target in bay of bengal it has since been successfully tested multiple times now submarine launched as well it can work from about 50 meters below this water surface this version was successfully test fired in march 2013 from a submerged platform of the coast of vishakhapatnam and if we talk about the strategic significance of it because it is the fastest supersonic cruise missile it gives an edge to india it serves as a deterrent to whoever would want to breach the borders of india also you see it's working enormously well in the defense diplomacy when india wants to build a defense uh, relations with somebody they can also enter into contracts with respect to export of brahmos that has happened with philippines now there was a controversy with respect to brahmos recently on march 9 when pakistan claimed that un, an unarmed missile had landed in its territory then the ministry of defense they formed a high level task force to 
indulge into the matter. But it is still not clear which missile was it. Also, some experts believe that it was Brahmos because there was a technical malfunction it was associated with that. So what is the way forward? Now, more versatile Brahmos missiles are getting built up that have higher ranges, maneuverability and accuracy as well. Versions currently being tested, they include ranges up to 350 kilometers as compared to the originals to 90 kilometers. All right. And versions with even higher range, that is up to 800 kilometers with hypersonic speed are set to be on the cards. Hypersonic cruise missiles, uh, they are being developed by China, USA, North Korea, Russia. So why not us? Also, efforts are going on to reduce size and signature of existing versions and augment its capability further so that it cannot be, uh, you know, uh, it can prove to go out of the radar if anybody wants to track it. Okay, let's look at this particular tweet of the year 2020. Successful test firing of Brahmos by Indian Navy. Brahmos supersonic uh, cruise missile in anti-ship mode. So, it can work on anti-ship mode as well. So, let's see what happens for Brahmos in the near future. Now, let's look at this uh, particular graph which is showing us how India is improving year by year when it comes to defense exports because not only we have to become Atmanirbhar in the defense sector but we also have to increase our exports as well. Moving on, let's look at the question. How does the Brahmos cruise missile give India an edge in defense diplomacy? How does the Brahmos cruise missile give India an edge when it comes to defense diplomacy? Try to write it in 150 words, okay? So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated. Thank you so much for watching.